Typical features in echoscopy are shown in the tableau in figures uh, 4, uh, 5, 8 and in cases 4, 5, 9 to 4, 6, 2. Wall thickening and the other signs of inflammation such as edema and local liquid collections. They must never be interpreted isolated from clinical signs, patient's history and laboratory results. In here, in case 460, an especially pronounced wall thickening must be noted and in the following case 461, the oblique appendix position is noteworthy. Please note as well the lithiasis. In case 462, a reflex rich case of acute appendicitis in, is given. We come back to that. And case uh, 463 briefly demonstrates some steps of laparoscopic intervention until the extraction of the specimen and the typical specimen of a laparotomy is shown in case 464. Variability of echoscopic features is found in this series cases 465 to 472 with aspects of inflammation as rendered by echoscopy. To repeat with the old-fashioned virtues of taking history, asking for historical details and for the individual details of the individual history and with touching the abdomen by careful physical examination, without these medical virtues, clinical ultrasonography is only another modality of imaging. Following notes may be added to the information already given. 465 is more or less like a space occupy mess and 466 demonstrates hyperperfusion in bubble technique which is not so really helpful and 467 repeats the finding of stones. 468 repeats the finding of reflex richness as mentioned before and 469 underlines the sometimes sparse information in echography if compared to history and clinical findings and 470 is a classical case of appendicitis and this is uh, in 471 uh, a case very similar to 469 and 472 is a flex rich uh, appendicitis again incidentally and adolescently an endoscopy was performed in this case of appendicitis 473. This might have been avoided by careful echoscopy. The following seven cases underline again and repeatedly uh, the purpose of uh, the inflammatory features allowing uh, the additional visual moving sequences demonstration of acute appendicitis additional to the clinical information. And once more are shown an obliquely positioned appendicitis in case 474, the not so convincing case 475, where waiting was mandatory, and the doubtful case 476, which was indeed and in reality, a terminal ileum inflammation 
only in the end. And case 477 has none inflamed diverticular, but wall thickening was in the end due to a sigma carcinoma, whereas in 478 and 479 are demonstrated reflex mixed cases of appendicitis. In gravity as a differential diagnosis is seldom but sometimes seen as in 480. 481 shows a not so seldom a complication after appendectomy an abscess as shown in picture 481. In this child in 482 clinical features including history data were not really convincing so waiting was mandatory. These typical findings in two different cases are at risk of spread even once you puncture in fine needle technique leading to a spread in the sense of pseudo myxoma peritonei in the cases 483 and 484, so do never puncture. Appendix can be of enormous variations both in size and in position as figures 485A and 485B show. This clinical condition in case 486 needs immediate appendectomy and echography is most helpful. And it is here in case 487 as well, allowing the clear differentiation between the reasons possible. In both these cases, the leading clinic picture was weight loss and a simple echographic systematic Glance at the abdomen to reveal the true reason. In 488, you see a typical carcinoma of the appendix. Whereas case 489 shows a typical sacral carcinoma. In 490, the appendix was said to be taken out completely, which was not the case. In 491 is another example for the importance of careful differential diagnosis. 492 shows nicely a schematic drawing on a diverticulitis. In case 493, and the following return to the case of diverticulitis with wall thickening, shadowing, etc., which is seen in 494 as well. 495 shows a carcinoma of the left flexor invasive to the spleen. In 496, you see a diverticulosis by endoscopic aspect. This again is shown in 497A and in more a detail in 497B. Note the small abscess formation. The same is true again, 498, showing a diverticulitis and a wall thickening. 499 shows a transvaginal aspect of a diverticulitis. These signs are well present in case 500. You see the wall thickening and the abscess formation. And as in 501, you can have a very close look on the diverticulitis.
This is true for case 502 as well. Note the physical pressure at the end of the video clip. In 503, you find a complication after fine needle puncture and hematoma of the abdominal wall. And in 504, we return to the topic of the wall thickening, etc., in diverticulitis, as you see. As we do as well in a case 505 with the marked signs of inflammation. The limited use of uh, color-coded echography is shown in a case 506. Simple echography is helpful enough alone as it is shown in 507. And again and with endoscopia in a case 508. Cases 509 and 510 reveal the histological feature of diverticular and a diverticulitis. 511 and 512 show the echographic and the endoscopic diagnosis and treatment of a phlegmona of the sigmoid and please note how good these conditions are visualized. Whereas case 513 shows another case of diverticulitis again, which is true for case 514 as well with the market wall thickening. And even the involvement of the urinary bladder in sigma diverticulitis in case 515. Case 516 repeats the finding of the foregoing case because it's so nice in near sight. Whereas 517 reveals the involvement of Douglas cavity in gallbladder perforation. 518 it shows another case of diverticulitis not so easily recognized. Again, and as shown in 519, is the limited use of color Doppler in these cases. 520, once more again to repeat the use of both echographia and endoscopia. In 521, the result after fine needle puncture of an abscess and its evacuation is shown. Case 522 is unique in that you find both a diverticulosis and an amyloidosis of big intestine. Cases 523 and 524 show the old problem of the echoscopic differential diagnosis between a cancer and a inflammation, and it was unluckily the first. Cancer as well of the left flexure was through with invasive growth into the spleen, in case 525. Case 526 shows the necrosis residuum after a vascular complication. Once more in case 527, a, a covered perforation of a diverticulitis in near sight. In 528, you look to the upper abdomen again in the sense of metastatic ovarian carcinoma. 
and another carcinoma had to be found in 5 to 9, uh, this time of a sigmoid, which was true, unfortunately, in 5.30 as well, a sigma carcinoma endoscopically. And this was true in case 531 as well, another and third case of sigma carcinoma. Whereas in a case uh, 532, it was only a inflammation which was relevant. In case 533, the seldom complication of a pneumatoria was already found in the patient's history.